fat sack side break. Some I was at a uh, I was at a. Um, You're alive now. Oh, I am. Okay. Well, Just I was, say I, was, hi to I was at a uh, at a forum about white supremacy. I don't know if you know, know what that idea is. Not much. No. Okay. Okay. And long story short, there were the kids there at the forum, and uh, I recorded some of the, some of the kids because it was like a public forum. And then, uh, then the parents they got like really upset with me. So I'm still working through that that legal thing. So now I know to ask people's consent now for different things. But it's always you know, it's always children that I don't get any children. Yeah, people. like children in a public setting. What is, what is the rule there? You know. Um, but let's take the picture, right? You're you get a response to a call, and it's um, and it's in somebody's house or whatever, or in a, in a, in a, in a case thing. You don't know what that person, if they have a gun, if they have a weapon, you don't know what their mindset is, if they've been like drunk or high or whatever it is. When you go into, into that situation, um, what, what are the things that you think about? All those things, I suppose. Um, to tell you the truth, not so much about the guns. Okay, okay. We don't have many guns here. No guns here. Well, we're not, not the oh. no guns. Oh. <laughs> No, okay, not mini. Okay, well, so, how, how, how do you define that in, in terms of like mini gun versus no gun versus little guns? Well, I'll give you an example. I've been a police officer for 12 years. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever come across one person with a gun in my 12 years. Wow. And I am in the biggest city of, in the country where we have the biggest population. Right. Wow. Wow. In the farms, out in the outback in the farms, okay. there, of course there's been more guns because people the farmers use them for hunting and stuff. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying that we don't have any guns, mm -hmm. but it's not something that Australian police really come across regularly mm -hmm. um, because we have very strict gun laws. No, very strict gun laws. Very strict gun laws. Okay, that's that, that's the phrase, guys. Gun laws. <laughs> um, so I mean, I think everybody agrees. I mean, even in the United States, that certain people shouldn't have guns. That's right. Crazy people. Uh, people who have been involved in gun violence in the past, um, but really, people have a hard time understanding why citizens, law-abiding citizens, shouldn't have the right to be able to defend themselves when mm -hmm. when, when, when they need to. Yeah. Um, how, how's that conversation gone in in Australia? Well, we had that big debate back in 1996. Um, we had a huge massacre in 1996 down in Tasmania mm -hmm. where a lone gunman killed 35 people. Mm -hmm. It took, I don't know the exact statistics, but it took less than two weeks for the gun laws to change countrywide. Wow, that's two fast. Weeks, less than, I think. Oh, wow. Um, there was a huge buyback scheme by the government, so the government actually bought everyone's guns back off them. Mm -hmm. right? So they gave them money and said, you give me a gun and I'll give you money for it. Um, <clears throat> Complete countrywide ban on semi-automatic weapons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, okay. Now, 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 for, for people who don't know, a semi-automatic weapon is a weapon where you shoot, where you press the uh, trigger once, and one bullet comes out. Yeah, and then you see my on like that, and then you bang, 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 bang. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so this massacre happened in Tasmania, yeah. which is a describe Tasmania is like it's a very, it's a no. Okay. It's a very small um, state. Um, down at the very bottom of the country, mm -hmm. a little bit of the map of Australia, there's a little island in the bottom, mm -hmm. that's Tasmania, very small, very quiet. Um, the main, the capital of Tasmania is Hobart, and that's like the country town compared to Sydney. Wow. Um, but there was a crazy guy that lived down there, and you know, guns were available for anyone, really, mm -hmm. and he just lost it and decided to kill people for no reason. Mm. So, 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 so rather than tailoring the, the, the gun laws, Right to kind of fit that situation, the country just went ahead and banned all the guns. And can I tell you, since 1996, uh -huh. we have not had one single massacre. Mass shooting, wow. One shooting, one, one, one single massacre. Yeah. Okay. And when I say massacre, okay. I mean, you know, uh, more than... Like mass shooting. Mass shooting, yeah. Okay, okay. So okay. people say gun laws don't work. Well, it worked here, and it's been how many years since 1996? So kind of a number of very good massacre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like at least 18 years. Yeah, yeah at least 18 so, years ago. I mean, okay, so Australia is a country that is basically surrounded by water. That's right. Right. Um, let's talk demographics here. 
What are the demographics here in Sydney and Australia and Tasmania in, in general? I don't know. I'm in Google. But okay. um, a few million in Sydney, I don't know the exact million. Mm -hmm. You're talking about population, right? Pop, not only pop population, but demographics. How are people here? Are most people... Now, I'm African-American, I'm you know, black. I've, I've seen... I met my first black person here today in the grocery store. You to know. be fair, I've seen three. So. <laughs> okay, she's seen three, I've, I've seen one. I've seen three black people you know. so far. But it's not as diverse it doesn't here. Is that, then, that could then be just because where we are. It, we're not, we're not, it wouldn't be able to exactly stand in America, we, you know. We, so, you, you mean Aboriginal people that you're referring to, or just? No, no. So, so what does so, that mean? So non, yeah, so what, okay. For those who don't know. So for those who don't know, what are Aboriginal people? I don't know what Aboriginal people <laughs> <laughs> Aboriginal people are um, our very first Australians. So okay. <clears throat> they're native to this country. Okay. So they're dark skinned. Okay. Um, they, before the English came to Australia and settled mm -hmm. in 1700 and something, um, the Aboriginal people were already here. Mm -hmm. And English came and settled. settled. They said mm. this land belongs to no one. <laughs> now it now belongs to England. Uh -huh. um, we're still under the English, you know, the, the Union Jack on our flag and under the Commonwealth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Australia's in the Commonwealth. Commonwealth, yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, so Aboriginal people are native to this country. They, you know, they were the first on this land. Mm -hmm. sure. So, um, yeah, and then back when, back in those days, it was very sad what happened when the, when the English came and a lot of terrible stuff happened mm. and it's been an ongoing battle for the Aboriginal community and um, you know to rectify what happened back in the past um, yeah. but comparing it to the African Americans no we don't have the same number of Aboriginal people as the, the African Americans in America so 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 what, what percentage of the of the population here would you, would you say are Aboriginal very I don't know the exact number but it's very low very low yeah I don't I can't Guess like one percent low? No, higher than that. I'm, okay. I don't know. Yeah. From from what you've seen in Sydney, Australia, right in in uh, in the Sydney part, how many Aboriginals have you have you met? Out of every ten. Sorry. Out of every ten or every hundred people, about roughly how many would you say would be Aboriginal? In in Sydney. Out of every hundred, probably maybe or. Ten people? I'm just guessing. Okay. okay. okay, okay. No, that's, but there, but that's there, all we wanted. Yeah. We just yeah, wanted yeah, a I'm, I'm guesstimate. Right. That's all. Guess so they're a minority. They're a minority in, 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 uh, in here, which means that when, how would you classify the majority of people in uh, Sydney? Australian. Are they are they are, are Australians? Are, are most of those Australians uh, immigrants from Europe? Yeah. Well, okay. um, we're very multicultural. Okay. Um, the white Anglo-Saxons came. Um, originally from England, um, but then in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, there was a huge European uh, migration into Australia. So then we have a lot of Greeks, we have a lot of Italians, we have mm. um, you know Spanish. We have lots of different communities. Oh, Asian community, a huge Asian community. I see the Asian. Yeah, 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 yeah. you know China and Asia is just, just up north. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, north. right. Okay, okay. So it's a huge mix. Because, because, because the reason why I ask those questions is that in the United States we also have a multicultural nation, mm -hmm. uh, but areas where people are um, more homogenous, there tends to be less violence. Yeah, less violence there. And so I was wondering, do those um, if, if those things could apply also to Australia being a seemingly very homogenous, you know, nation here. Um, the one guy that was, which was shooting people down there, you made he was crazy. Well, yeah, he was, he was mentally ill. He was, he was, yeah, he was, he was mentally ill. Um, but in general, you, you wouldn't, you don't have that much violence, you know, in areas where the people are mostly homogenous. Like, for example, in, in uh, Montana, Idaho, places like that in the United States, Pretty much, you know, not that much violence, right? Yeah. Places like Chicago, uh, New York, Los Angeles, uh, San Francisco, those places where there are lots of different types of people at, you have a, a pretty high, high share of violence. Um, 
So one of the questions I wanted to, to ask with that is that, compare and contrast, in Los Angeles, in California, you could, you could steal something up to $950 worth of value. And if you steal something over that, then it becomes a prosecutable um, uh, felony. Mm -hmm. Anything under that is just a misdemeanor. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, what, what are your ideas on that? I had no idea that was the case. Okay. If you steal something for $5 on the TV, you get, you get charged for it. You get charged for it? <laughs> yeah? Okay. I mean, it, it, does it, do you have like an idea of like a felony system here versus misdemeanors? Or is everything the same? Anything that's a okay. crime, I suppose, you know, it's, you know, you get, you get put before the court for it. Okay. Oh. Anything. So the court decides? Yeah. I mean, we have, okay. we have, we have, um, Crimes that are punishable by infringement notice only. Infringement which notice. Which is a, a ticket, a fine. Okay, got gotcha. you. Okay, right. fine. Okay, got gotcha. you. Um, yeah. But certain things that you can't get fines for, mm. you get charged for and put before the court. You put a court. It makes make, make sense. Yeah. So going back to the to, to the gun ban. Yes. Right. <laughs> you know, America and Australia, I guess, have you know we have very different, similar makeups in terms yeah. of history. America was born out of war. Mm. We were born out of, you know, sticking it to the British and being like, nah, you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna mess with us. We are born out of the concept of freedom and liberty and letting people um, do what they want. Yeah. You know, within reason, yeah. right? Uh, I, think, I think the idea is, is that a people, a moral people, is able to um, restrain themselves and they don't need government in order to provide the rules and restrictions to kind of restrain human behavior. Um, is there liberty in Australia? Yeah, there is. There is. Um, oh. <laughs> All right. it's, it's, it's hard to explain. Um, the majority of Australians don't want guns. Um, and that's the truth. Wow. I, the, none of my friends or family would ever think to have a gun. It's just not part of our culture. Um, mm. We weren't brought up with guns. Mm. Um, so the whole changing of the laws and the buyback scheme really didn't affect that many people. And even the people that it did affect, that were totally against it back then, mm. actually now, I watched an interview only a few months ago, um, they now say, you know what, it was the right thing to do. And I've come around and now I agree that it should have been done. Mm. So I understand where you're coming from and, you know, the American culture, but ours is a little bit, it's just a bit different. I mean, because if you look at the uh, very similar buyback schemes that happened, you know, in the 20th century, mm -hmm. when you have those uh, programs, what usually follows is totalitarian governments being able to say, okay, now that the people are you know, defenseless, yeah. you know, we as a government, we could go in, you know, have control and to do other things. Yeah. Are you, um, is there any, I guess there's no fear <laughs> here like, in no. Australia that the government is we ever going to, <laughs> you know, get tyrannical? We're a democratic society. Mm. Um, that's, that hasn't happened. Yeah. Mm. It's, you know, we're, we have the right to protest, we have the right to do a lot of things. Um, but if the government takes away that right of guns, that's it. No, no, it takes away a right for people to 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 be to protest to address their grievances. That wouldn't that wouldn't happen though. How do you know that would happen? Because the reason why the guns were taken away was to protect our society from mass shootings. That was the main reason that it worked. Uh -huh. But now it gives the government a monopoly on force. I don't know. I just agree. You disagree? I mean, well, please share because I'm I'm on your end here. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we're having the same debate in, in the United States yes. also, right? Um, you know, because there are many people who feel that if there's a president who gets into the, you know, to the White House, that they could just, you know, say, do an executive order or flip a switch or, you know, really do, do things to um, take away people's rights to defend themselves, mm -hmm. right? Now, other the guys are safe. Mm. Right, and, and historically we've seen that with regimes in Europe, where before they start killing people, they say 
let's disarm the, the, the populace. Mm. You know, so in Australia, um, the people's attitudes towards the government here are they are such where people, you know, just believe whatever the government um, says they're gonna do? Not necessarily, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that, you know, the fact that they took away our guns back then, uh -huh. um, you know, is is the first step of them then taking away everything else or taking our power away or you know doing anything, anything like that. Well, I mean, but they could, right? Because the people they can't do anything to stop it. But this well, maybe that's not maybe that's not their their definition of having power. Like, if I have a gun, I have power. Maybe that is something different from the American mentality than in the Australian mentality, where it sounds like what you're saying is that if I have a gun, because the government took that power away, that the people are defensive. now the people have no power, and that might not I'm sorry, be. This, this and very that, direction <laughs> yeah. and that's, that might just not be the case with the society and the culture here in Australia. Well, well let's, let, let, let's hear from the society and the culture here in Australia. Do people here, are they generally politically active? Or are most people here just like, let me just, whatever? Very laid back. Very laid we're back. different to, we're, a lot of Australians just don't, do not care who's running the, running the country, as long as it's doing an okay job. Mm. Okay. Oh, and that's an okay job, that's it? I can't speak for everyone. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, as long as they're not ruining the country and just, you know, I don't think Australian, I can't say this for everyone, but <laughs> yeah, you know, as long as they're not doing the wrong, the ba a bad thing or the wrong thing, it's pretty laid back because I don't think it really matters. Okay, because I know there's a huge drought going uh, on are you? Drought. Yeah, yeah droughts. Yes. You know? yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and with that, I mean, don't people want the government to respond to that or people generally don't care? Well, <laughs> a lot of people want the government to respond to it, a lot of people don't care. A lot of people are ignorant about it because it doesn't affect them. Mm. Like people here wouldn't affect them, but obviously the farmers are, you know, the poor farmers are suffering. Yeah, so it will affect them. Some people, some people that you know, know that it's affecting them, obviously want the government to do something about it, and it's, mm. it's a huge issue. So, so I mean, okay, so because in, in in Los Angeles, yes. especially the uh, voter uh, participation rate is at thirteen percent. The what? Sorry. Uh, the amount of people who vote in the elections in 13%. 13%. So 13% of people, you know, care. That's enough. because it's not compulsory. But it's, did you know that's compulsory to vote in this country? It's comp you have to vote you in, have to in vote Australia? What? Wow. Yeah. If you don't vote, um, you, get a, you get a fine. <laughs> if you don't vote, if, and guys, listen to that. If you don't vote in Australia, you will get a fine. Yeah. What, what's the reason? What's the, okay, the, okay, did the police come to your door? No, 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 no. If you just don't go and, if you don't go and, and vote. Like a registration kind yeah, of thing, Yeah, you right? have to mark it in off the, the electoral roll. Yeah. And then if you don't show up, you get a fly on the mail. What if I don't pay it? I don't know. No, I've never been in that situation before. No, no one has ever it doesn't, it doesn't become It doesn't become a criminal offence. It doesn't? No. So I can just ignore it. You could, but I think maybe you might take off some points of your license, maybe? I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Something, something will happen, but it's not, you're not going to get thrown in jail. But yeah. No, but no one wants a fine. So <laughs> people go and vote. And sometimes they just go and mark their name off and then just write nothing on the form. Wow. Wow. I won't say that. But that, I mean, I guess yeah. now you can say that that's not, <laughs> now you can say that people have spoken. You know, it's yeah. not, a, it's not a, a culture of, well, only so many people voted, so the, this That's is what right. we get. But now here it's like, no, everybody has spoken whether they said something specific or, yeah. you know, just. Well, I mean, I mean, it's, it's like a, it's the question of liberty, you know? If I, if, I, if I want to, if I don't want to vote, then I should, I should Then go. you go and I you don't write anymore. anything on the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> or, I mean, but why are you- There's your liberty. Comp comp composing me, I mean, but it's composing, you know, you have to, you have to do something though. That's the, that's the interesting thing. If you have to get in your car and drive to the voting station to mark, I don't want to vote. I mean, what is that? Yeah, I gotta get in my car, drive to the police station, and mark, I don't, I don't want to want vote. To, vote. Yeah. It, it to avoid a fine? Okay. 
Oh wow, yeah. So 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 yeah. So there are there are people um, in the United States who are more you know liberal when it comes to that kind of kind of idea. Um, but if you talk about like the the successes of it, right, of the gun buyback program in Australia, mm -hmm. because it sounds like the entire government changed. You know, a fundamental right kind of got taken away in less than two weeks, according to somebody who was, in your words, crazy, you know, and probably, and probably was, right? In an area of Australia that was very um, sparse. Yeah. I mean, um, so I, I, I guess, I guess the, the real question is, is that why did the government just a success? Because it sounds like it just responded to like a blip. In the in the general trend, because mm. it seemed like there wasn't you know twenty or thirty people dying before that event happened in nineteen ninety six. We had a couple of mass shootings before ninety six. wasn't as big as that one, um, but we had a, a few before then. Probably five or six people being killed. Mm. Um, and you know what? It's probably it all stems from I think someone's mental illness mm -hmm. that's responsible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know how do you police? If you just leave, let guns be in everyone's hands, how do you police just the mentally ill? Mm -hmm. Every, a lot of people yeah. get mental illness, you know, they could have mental yeah, illness tomorrow and not be diagnosed yesterday. Correct. You know, how do you police that? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a big question. Um, in the United States, we're talking about red flag laws. Uh, so a red flag law is that if somebody uh, observes somebody else, Acting crazy or a mental illness or basically anything you haven't really defined it yet, then they could essentially call the government or the police and they'll suspend somebody's ability to get a firearm. What if they already have a firearm? Then, then you know, then they already have this. Then, then, then you get Then you do. Then you do. But that's being highly debated because some people fear that. Um, if I don't like you, or if I, you know, disagree with the color shirt that she's having, I'm gonna report yeah. to, to the police that, you know, come and like, or mark them down yeah, to take someone's law, you know. So that's the kind of thing people are having right now. Or if the government decides that because you have an opinion that they disagree with, they're gonna go in and suspend your your, your rights to have that. So and that's very time consuming as well, but you know. Mm -hmm. It'll take a lot of police man hours to follow up with that. What if the person goes missing, you can't find them, and they've got their gun on them, and then it takes two seconds to do a mass shooting? You know, how, how we've inundated with like 3,000 calls. Yeah. How yeah. are you going to police all that? It seems so, so overwhelming. Yeah, that's, 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 that's definitely true. I'm coming from a police officer, I get, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> um, so, like, so I guess you have this culture now where people are like, okay, you know, government says, you know, no guns, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. Uh, but people still have guns. People still have because guns. Because I just saw on the news yesterday in Cambria, I think it was Cambria. Canberra? Yeah, Canberra, right? So, some lady was shot in her car, just randomly by a person. Yeah, I did say that. You know, guy, guy, guy came and just shot the lady in her car, yeah. and she drove to the, to the hospital to, to, yeah. get, to get checked out. Yeah, so I didn't say that, but I... I don't want to comment on that because I don't know the full story, but oh, yeah, sure, yeah. It could, there could be some kind of related incident behind that. Mm. That's not, I don't think that, that wasn't a random attack. Mm. It wasn't just someone that checked me. I think there was something known behind that. Maybe, maybe. Um, but it still illustrates the point that, you know, you as the police, you know, you can't take away all the guns. No, we can't. Um, and look. We can't take away all guns. Uh -huh. There are going to be illegal guns on the market, 100%. Illegal but, guns on the market. <laughs> but there's, there's, there is still uh -huh. a huge police force that invests a lot of time and effort trying to get those guns off the street, and mm -hmm. we have a huge success rate in doing that. Um, how does that how does that typically look like? You guys just burst into the door with like, like, like grenades and like no, you said the, you gun. said you guys compensate people for their guns, right? Well, back then, we, back then, back oh, then, that's not the same yeah, now. Gun oh, okay. The gun buyback still doesn't exist anymore, no, right? Because so. now it's illegal for you to have a gun. Yeah. So when do you do you, does someone call the police say, hey, I think this guy has a gun? Is that how it goes? Who knows? 
Oh, wow. There's some secret stuff going on. Okay. <laughs> so you guys find out that a person has a gun. And oh, yeah. And then, and then they'll, they'll bring up all... If we know that someone's got a gun, it won't be on the street anymore. And there's always going to be legal guns. But the, issue, the, fact, the fact of the whole gun law thing was to make sure that guns don't fall into the hands of people that want to go around killing random people. Yeah, sure. You know, a lot of the, um, the, the illegal guns that are on the market probably been being um, carried by, you know, drug dealers or stuff like that. But these people... There's, are... there's drug dealers in Australia? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, and the drug dealers, they have guns. Probably. Some, some might, some might, some may not. Okay. I don't know. Okay. But the issue is, I don't want a mentally ill, crazy, deranged with a gun. That is way more dangerous than a drug dealer. That's in my personal opinion. I, I, okay. I, I, I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. Mm. And then, um, you know, the Second Amendment in the United States Constitution, you know, gives everybody the right to, to bear arms. So in this society, you know, that right is intended to be there. No. Um, so happy with that. And, 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 and you're happy with that. Um, it's been so, twelve years. It's been twelve years that I've been the cops, and I haven't had any. You should have a gun. Yeah, that, I guess. I, I guess you know, if you take if you take that fear away, We're then I daily. think um, you know that probably changes how you would do policing. You know, yeah. if, if 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 you walked up to uh, to somebody in the car, you could be fairly certain that you know they're not gonna cause harm to you with a gun. No, how can people cause harm other ways if they don't have a gun? <laughs> the police officer knives. Knives. Is, is, is that, is, is, is the people who are stabbing people no. in, uh, in Australia? No, um, no. Anything could be a weapon, though. That's, I think that's more what he's saying. Weapon, yeah. Different things can be weapons, and it can be of danger to the police mm. as well. But you know, a knife can't go and kill 35 people in 10 seconds. That is true. That is my main point. That is true. But a truck can. We, trucks can. And we see no that in, in, in France. That's right. I mean, we can't, we can't stop all motor vehicles. Why not? Are you sure? Is, or there's not enough political will for it to happen. <laughs> right? So we, 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 we He's that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right? I mean, you know, that, I mean, yeah, France, you know, same situation, right? Guy came down angry. Weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. What what keeps what in your opinion what keeps people you know sane and in line? Do you think that it's rules made by the government to, to do that? You know to keep people functioning normally. What do you mean? What's your what I'm the question? The the question is you know people if they want to kill people yeah. they're, they're they're gonna do it yeah they're gonna do it in uh, in the United States when we have to, when we have less diverse people groups, they tend to be, you know, safer for those people to side with. We have states like that where they haven't seen a mass shooting in like decades. While we have some other states where, you know, unfortunately it happens, you know, more frequently than the others. Um, she's from Chicago and in Chicago, I think uh, two weeks ago, for the first time they had a weekend where nobody was killed. Yeah. It's sad. So, it's in, really in sad. Chicago. But now, if I just say in Chicago, blah, 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 which is true, but then if you look at a map of Chicago, and you look at one particular area of Chicago, that area of Chicago, high, high, high crime, and the other areas are, are fairly safe, right? Um, so why is that? Uh, in my opinion, it's because you have a population that is not, uh, that's in poverty. Right, where opportunity is so low, right. and so people tend to grab to other kinds of things to um, to do things. And there's a lot of gang violence there, mm. right? So the gang violence there brings a lot of crime. Mm. Are, are there gangs in in uh, Sydney? Um, no, not really. Okay, not really. Okay, I would say no. Wow, there there are no gangs in Sydney, Australia, guys. Um, or is there just one game and they don't have like a rival game, it's just the Crips, no bloods? Yeah, <laughs> we don't, we don't really have much of a problem in that field. Okay, okay. And there's no people going around with knives stabbing people, like robberies or anything like that? Mm, not really. No. Wow. Not really. 
So you say you, you guys a lot of times respond to uh, drug-related crimes. So someone under the influence or uh, maybe a domestic violence situation. Are those generally, like assault and like domestic yeah. violence, are those generally a lot of what you guys are seeing here in the Sydney in the area? City, in the city, yes, but in different, if different parts of the, the city or mm. the state mm -hmm. would um, experience different kinds of different crime. Okay. Okay, so, so, so let's talk about the Aboriginals. Okay. Right. They are the native peoples here in Australia mm. before the white man came from, you know, England. overseas, from, from England. Uh, do they have a different relationship with the police? Um, yes. Uh, how, how would you describe that? It's, um, it's a, a constantly evolving relationship. Um, mm -hmm. Many, many, many years ago, it probably wasn't great. Um, Grown a lot since then. And I'm talking, I'm talking, you know, 70s, 60s, back then. Got you, 60s, okay, cool. Okay, cool. Um, but now, you know, we do, a, we try and do a lot of things to mend the past mm. um, and and show them that we, we care and we're here to support them and we understand what happened back in the day was wrong. Um, and we, you know, trying to move forward and progress and move on with our lives and yeah. So yeah, it is a constant challenge and a battle. Um, but we're we're trying to you know we're always constantly working with the Aboriginal community to strengthen what, those what, 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 what are some of those challenges? I mean, do they like throw water bottles at the police? No, not necessarily. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's hard for me to comment on, but mm. um, I think that a lot of a lot of a lot of it is trying to build trust, but trying to instill trust. In them saying, you know, we're here to help and support. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want them to think the visual community think that police are always out to get them. Out to get them. That's mm -hmm. the, that's the thing that we're trying to overcome. Combat. If if, if, you, if you're if you're like driving in your police, they have police cars in, in mm -hmm. Sydney, right? Mm -hmm. No, we're on a horseback. Yeah, of course. We're oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, if you're if you're, if you're like if you're, if you're in your car and you see somebody else in a car. <laughs> In another car, in the in the in the, in the, in the another car, yeah. nine police. please. Yeah. And uh, don't 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 you ever like you know um, you know say like oh that person might be an Aboriginal. Let me uh, let me let me you know pull them over. No. 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 Is, is, is is nothing like no, that. No. 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 Okay. Is there's no kind of like animosity between like the police and the uh, Aboriginal peoples? No. Uh, okay. it would, that wouldn't be a reason to stop a car. Mm. It'll it'll be someone's behaviour at the time. What are they doing that's suspicious? Well, well, well whatever their light is is out. The like bigger light is out. Do you ever do you ever stop a, a, a car? We can. Okay. We can if if, if the car's not working efficiently. <laughs> we can stop the car. Okay. We also have random breath testing. Did you know about that? Random what? Breath testing. What is that? We can stop any car, any motor vehicle, uh -huh. just for a random breath test to see if they're intoxicated. So we don't need the power to stop the car is going. That car's driving, we stop it for a random test. So even if they're like not swaying no, or anything? Random. Yeah. So we have the power to stop. It's random breath testing laws. You know, power to stop any vehicle that's in movement. Mm. Um, or any vehicle that's moving with the obviously a person in the driver's seat operating operating the machinery. Yeah. Stop the vehicle, uh, license, breath test. Lighter. And if you're over the limit, obviously. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. they do the breathalyzer and they're clean. You say, okay, so, have a good, nice day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I if mean, they're not, what if happens? They're over the limit. Well, not if they're over, yeah, yeah, if over the well, limit. Well, then they get arrested and then get taken back to the police station and they do a proper test mm -hmm. on the machine mm -hmm. and then that, that's the reading. Now, when you arrest people, do you put handcuffs on them? You only put handcuffs on someone if you have a reason to put handcuffs on someone. What? Then, then how, how do you arrest somebody? In, okay, okay. Okay, well, if, somebody, if someone's <laughs> compliant, uh -huh. yeah, they don't need to put handcuffs on them. Mm. Oh, look at that. Why? Do they do that in America? I mean, you, or is that just a show that you're watching? You, you well know, because I've gotten handcuffed before, and um, you put handcuffs on somebody because you want to make sure they stay where, where you want them. That's right, but we, yeah. do, we do that if we have the reason, to, if we have reason to do so if we if we believe that they're going to be violent or they're going to escape custody, then we do it. But if 
If they're compliant and we have no reason to think that they're going to do any of that, then there's no need to put any of those. So if I'm so if I'm just like just you know walking down the street and you know you come up to me as as a police officer and and you say, hey, uh, like I guess let's role play a little bit, right? I'm just, I'm just I'm just I'm just walking down <laughs> I'm, I'm walking down the street and then I see you as as a, as a police officer and then I just turn around and, and go someplace else. Oh, so if you look at me and you yeah. kind of go and walk away, yeah, that's suspicious. Okay. Why would you do that? Because I don't like police officers. Because you know they, you know they. Well, I guess in Australia they're not trigger happy. <laughs> but in, in, I, let's, let's talk yeah. about trigger happy as well after this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you've got an opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's like it's like because um, you know if I if I see a police officer I'm like I don't want anything to do with a police officer I don't want to ask me any questions. Like, I ain't seen There's anything. There's suspicion. There's I suspicion. Nothing, right? within our so I'm getting, I'm getting the twine. Oh yeah, no, 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 no problem, no problem. <laughs> yeah. So if I go and I turn it and I and I go someplace else, do you have the right to say anything to me? Well, if it if it seems suspicious, okay, then yeah, I'll at least stop you and say, hey, what are you doing? Why are you walking away from me? You know, can I check your ID? So so in America, I have Miranda rights. Right. Okay. Right. Miranda rights is the right to remain silent. Yeah, if it's said away. Oh, so I can just not say anything. That's either. right. And you gotta let it go. Well, I'll, yeah. If I've got no reason to stop you, then yeah. But I was suspicious. Yeah, yeah. I could try and I could try and stop you and ask you how. What can I check your ID? Uh, but if I've got no reason to arrest you, then no, I can't arrest you. And, and you have a gun right now, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you would still be able to to say nothing. You would say everything you want. I can say nothing to you at all. And then I can go away. It depends on every every situation is different. Every situation is different. Okay, okay. So I mean, so so when so when you're when you're doing you know your local police work, I guess here especially, people are generally compliant and generally you know want to help you out, yeah. right? Do, 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 are there any snitches in um, in Sydney? What do you mean by snitches? So a snitch is a person who, uh, if somebody does something like a crime or whatever, then if you tell the police about that person who does a crime. Then you're a snitch, right? And okay, I have heard of that. Yeah. Okay, and a snitch is a <laughs> is a kind of a semi derogatory word, I, I guess. I, I'm not. It is. You don't want to be called a snitch. You snitches get stitches. Snitches, it's the saying. The saying is snitches get stitches. Yeah. But you're you're dumping someone in for committing a crime. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. If someone commits a crime and I call them, I call the triple zero guys. Triple yep. zero. Triple. Not, not, not one. Yep. If I call triple zero and I report it, right? Are there people like that who report people doing crimes? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Well, that's how we, that's the majority, that's how we get the majority of our calls. You get your tips, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so, so would you say that Australia, I guess, is the utopian place it is because um, there's no guns? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, well, well, only the government has guns, basically. Well, yes. <laughs> but, but a lot of people still have guns, but they're just strict walls around it. So you can still have a gun, okay. not a semi-automatic because that's completely banned, but you can still have a rifle if... Uh, right, all rifles are semi-automatic though. Well, you know what I mean, like, a, like this one. Uh, like uh, a handgun. Handgun. handgun, you can't, you can't, can't have handguns. Handgun. Okay. But farmers can have rifles, okay. or if you're in the sport of shooting, you can, have, you can own one. But if you don't have a criminal record, um, if you have a lock safe and, and all that kind of stuff, little checks and balances in place and then Please you come around and check your safe and make sure that your ammunition and your, your firearm are locked properly. Mm -hmm. Then you can have a firearm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right? That's, that's pretty cool. And no mental health issues. <laughs> and, and no mental health well, issues. Well, I'm not yeah. sure about that, but... Yeah, that's kind of hard to stream for that, right? Because you can develop that over time. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but... So, I mean, so in Los... In, uh, I think in Chicago, there's been cases where an uh, officer has come up on somebody in the car, right? Yeah. Ran, ran, ran the car, and uh, the person in the car takes his hands out and tries to take the officer's gun. Ugh. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Situ you know, situations like that. Do you, um, what do you do in that situation? I have had that once myself. Wow. How, how, did that, how did that go? Was it, was it an aboriginal who did that? No. No? Okay. 
Do you, you're obsessed with this Aboriginal thing. Um, it was someone mentally ill. Wow. And he was on ice. And he, he was on ice? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, meth. So, oh. Oh, then you have to call it ice over there? Oh, well, if they do, I don't know because I don't do a lot of Oh, okay, right. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we took him to the hospital to get mentally assessed because we had arrested him for something, but he obviously had some mental health problems. As he was in the hospital, he then tried to grab my gun. Mm. That was. Yeah, not a good feeling. So, so he wasn't, he didn't have handcuffs on him? No, not at that point, because at that point, well, he wasn't, <laughs> see, there was no point, there was no, there's no reason to handcuff him at that point, because he wasn't being violent with us. He was being, he was talking to the doctor, and the doctor then said to him, I'm going to keep you in here for a couple of days. Mm. And that's when he lost it, and then he, yeah, yeah. That's oh, so that wasn't intentional going for your gun, it wasn't like, no, it he's wasn't. high, reaching, yeah, no, touching, yeah, Okay. So and luckily he didn't get it off me. Yeah. Like, I actually got a cracked rim out of that. Really? Yeah. Wow, wow. Okay, so so you were able to do him and to stop him from from It doing took that. two cans of pepper spray to do that. Two cans of pepper spray. Wow, so, wow. So I uh, okay, so <laughs> But we didn't shoot him. But you didn't shoot him. You didn't take him either? No. Do you guys have tasers? We have tasers, yeah. Okay, well, what well, is a, is a, I, I suspect to fire a taser, you have looser rules around that versus the gun. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gun, gun is like literally last resort. Like it's, you know, you're about to be seriously injured or killed. But the, but the, but this mentally deranged person grabbed your gun. And he wasn't mentally deranged, but okay. he had he, some issues. But he had this, this individual, Grabbed your gun. He was high on meth. High on meth, and you didn't even take him. Well, no, the situation didn't allow it. So it, the situation didn't allow it, but no. your safety is at risk. Yeah, I know. But okay, like, 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 I care about you. <laughs> like, I, I mean, okay. I know, but I didn't we were in a small room. Okay. Small room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, it, it, it's he grabbed my gun, and it was like a. It was too close. He was, he was already too close to get the taser out. Mm. So to have the full effect of a taser, you kind of got to have a bit of a distance. Mm. Um, and we were already in a wrestle with him. So I really didn't want to get my hands off him to get the taser out and aim it. And it was just, it, okay. it, it, every situation is different. So you kind of got to assess it as it happens. Yeah, yeah. Every situation is different, which is, a, which is something that I've learned talking, you know, with police people and, and stuff like that. Um, so on that note, because every situation is different, what are some situations you've seen, you know, back, you don't say across the pond, because this is an ocean, yeah. um, back in America, <laughs> that, that, that you're like, oh man, I wish the, the police would have did something different there. Or is it hard to say because every situation is different? Every situation is different, yeah. yeah. You, can't really, you can't really comment, and I get really upset when people try and comment on police. Sorry, we're too long. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, Try and comment on police um, uh, Actually, operations or actions yeah. just by sitting on their couch at home watching on TV. Mm. It is so different when you're there. Mm. It is so different, and you, you, it's very hard to um, to comment on what could happen, or should have happened, or what had happened. Um, That's true. So, 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 so as as we close, because we're we're at the fifty five minute mark. This has been a great oh, conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great conversation, by the way. What are some, uh, I guess, some, some, some key ideas or, or key takeaways you've seen successful policing work here in Sydney that maybe we could replicate back home in Los Angeles and in Chicago without the whole taking away people guns? <laughs> you can't take that option from him. He's yeah, got liberty yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He, no, because that's never going to apply. But what are some other ways you've seen healthy policing uh, happen? You know, like, like this event that we're at now with the whole, you know, media and talk to an officer, I think is a really great idea. Yeah, I think community policing is very important. Community policing. You know, to meet police and talk with them and build relationships, especially with children um, at school and then going into the teenage years, it just kind of um, gives the community the idea that police are human mm -hmm. and we need to help. Police are human. Guys, police are human. They're human beings. Yeah. Yeah. We hurt we hurt as much as everyone else. Oh, we hurt as much as everyone else. <laughs> Even though they got the force and they got the guns and it's they got just the a uniform. Yeah, yeah but we still shed the same blood. Yeah, <laughs> okay, okay. But in Australia you can't hurt a police officer because you don't have guns, so 
you're unequal. That's not true. Here. That's not true. Not true. <laughs> you can't hurt a police officer with a gun. With a gun. So you can't like shoot a whole bunch of people or like that. And if you do want to do that kind of stuff, guys, you know, see a therapist or talk to somebody. You know, talk to somebody. You know, you did, we all we all don't want violence. <laughs> Right. And as you were saying, just before we close quickly, you were saying before yeah. about the police officers in America that are trigger happy. Yes. Um, I, I, yes, I, some, some might be, but I can see why. Because if I would, I, I, 100% I would not be a cop in America. I would be uh, scared. Okay. Right? Okay. Because sure. you know, there's, depending on what state you're in, there's yeah. a lot of firearms on the street. So they're going and stopping vehicles and they don't know who's in the car. You're always probably thinking, how's this person going to go? Because it's possible that they might have a gun. Yeah. Because they have the liberty to have a gun. That's right. And if something happens, if they see something in there, or they think it could, so they're about to pull out a gun, and then they're trigger happy, well, then I can kind of understand mm. that that's why they're trigger happy. Because we're not trigger happy because in my 12 years, I've never seen someone with a gun. So I'm not thinking that someone's going to have a gun on them. Wow. That's probably the reason why they are trigger happy, and it's a sad situation because people are innocent people are getting shot mm -hmm. when they don't have a weapon on them. Yeah, and the yeah. police are thinking to themselves, "I want to get home to my wife and kids, and my husband and kids. I don't want this to be the last day of my life." And they're like, "Oh, you know, that's why they are." So you know, I can see why this is happening. I, I yeah, exactly. That's um... say whether you can uh, comment on this or not. What is your opinion on safer gun laws in the U.S.? <laughs> your oh, opinion. Man, <laughs> Spencer cannot comment on that. Just your opinion, um, Sir John. I, I, you guys have so many more people than us. Mm. We've only got I don't know twenty something million in the whole country. How many million do you have? California has thirty five million people. So you got more. And there's three hundred. Yeah, there's three hundred million people in the whole country. Three hundred and four million. There you go. How do you? I don't know. I'm not a politician. I don't. How do you? change the way that you've been brought up and what you've got already. Um, but, you know, it would be somewhat safer if there was something in place for, you know, background checks and mentally ill people mm. not getting their hands on guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It would yeah. make some kind of a difference. Mm -hmm. Because I think if you look at all the mass shootings and massacres in, in American history, there's got to be some kind of mental illness related to all of them. Yeah, most most of the time there is. Yeah. And like for example, uh, people who are part of the NRA, right? Yeah. People, all the mass shootings, none of those people have been part of the NRA or have been part of groups like they haven't been. Been. No, they're not. They haven't been. They're no. just yeah. All right. no. a, a, a lot of these people are people who mentally ill or just decided one day that they're gonna commit suicide by a cop. Yeah, exactly. You know, they're gonna exactly. get the cops to, to shoot them because yeah. they're going through like either divorce or their business yeah. is bad or yeah. some other kind of situation. So, you know, we have we have lots of people, you know, way more, and they're not as homogenous as they are here in Australia. And we have Canada and Mexico, yeah. right? But it's also the easy access to the to the weapons. The easy access to the weapons. That's the yeah. issue. You know, yeah. someone's going through a bad time and they just want to die, they can go and get a gun quite easily. Yeah. Here, where the hell did you get an illegal gun? I don't know. I wouldn't be able to get an illegal. I wouldn't know in the first place to look. And I'm a cop. Mm. So what, wow. if, if I, you know, if I wanted to go and kill myself with a fire so and kill others, where would I go to get a gun? I've got no idea. Can't go to Walmart. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Is it a is Walmart? That's a point. It's called, it's called Kmart. Oh, Walmart is called Kmart here. Okay. Cool. It, it, interesting. Well, um, the other thing I wanted to say as it relates to community policing is that the police in Los Angeles, a lot of them, they don't live in the areas where they are doing their actual police work. Has that been a discussion here about, yeah, about that? Yeah, it's not much of an issue if you do or you don't. A lot of our police do live in that area, or some, some don't. It's not really a big issue. Okay. And it also depends on what kind of policing work you do. Mm. You know, I'm basically, um, I respond to jobs on the street, but then, you know, undercover police and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. want to kind of work in there. Yeah, area, so yeah, it's just a bit different. Yeah. Wow. Well, Sir John, this has been a pleasure. Thank you. Um, been really great. Thank you for, for answering all of my questions. Do, do you have any? Do you have any questions? <laughs> I don't think so. You can ask them. Why? Why would you? <laughs> Chill, <I'm laughs> <sorry. laughs> nothing. Nothing. Nothing.
she's gonna come out pretty interesting on the audio world. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you. I uh, I wish that you're safe. I pray that you're you're safe um, with all the situations that that you deal with. And uh, I believe that policing is supposed to be a community service type of, of yeah. action because a lot of times you guys are the last line of you know the of the feds and handling people's problems in, in yeah. society. Yeah. And you know, so you know, you guys have to have like a lot of training, I'm sure, to handle all types of different uh, crazy people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wish that you're you're safe. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Thank you guys for, for thank looking you. in. And thank you guys for listening. And um, yeah.